Being a private investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you'll get out of it. Not much you can do about it, I guess, except, like Julie always says... Walk softly, Peter Troy. And now, Peter Troy investigates the lives of a Bengal dancer. It's a well-known fact of life in show business that the fans are very fond of the exotic. In London, for instance, a guy gets up on stage and sings in a fair enough voice and maybe he goes down okay. But if the same guy sings with a French accent and changes his name from Peter to Pierre, he's a wow. In Paris, the Folie Bergère has a leaning towards English dolls for its chorus line. In Japan, a blonde doll will go down much better than a brunette because all Japanese girls are brunettes anyhow, and are Japanese men. Well, a blonde is something out of this world. All of which brings me to a certain dancer from India named Karisha, whose swarthy beauty my secretary Julie viewed with a somewhat jaundiced eye. I'll miss you when we leave Calcutta, beautiful. No doubt about that. And I'll miss being here, Stan. I've enjoyed working at this club. <laughs> you know, it's funny how in England people just don't realize they have clubs out here that are just the same as ours. Yes, that's right. It's a pity your contract had to run out. Oh, I've really had enough of the East for a while. I've been all over, and this is my second time in Calcutta. You can't work the circuit to death, you know. You got a job back in London to go to? No, but I'll organize something. I'm thinking of working up an Indian routine. Oh, uh, singing in Hindu? <laughs> no, <laughs> silly. A dance act. I do dance, too, you know. Oh, don't I know it. I've seen you. Your hot stuff, beautiful. <laughs> yes, well, uh, on the boat I can work up something that'll roll them in the aisles. I'll, I'll take an Indian name, pass myself off as a glamorous star of the East. Mm, might be an idea at that. With your dark colouring, you could just about pull that off, too. Better than going home as a straight singer. Hmm. Oh, by the way, I wonder if you'd take a package home for me. A package? Hmm. Okay, if you like. What is it, too big to post or something? Oh, no, no. It's very small, actually. You could slip it inside a box of tissues or something. Slip it inside it. A... Oh. You mean hide it from the customs when I land? That's right. You'd have no trouble. They won't be going over your things with a fine comb, you know. <laughs> For pity's sake, what is this thing you want me to sneak through the customs? Oh, nothing really. Just a little present a friend of mine wants to give to his wife. It's a jeweled bracelet I bought in Hong Kong for him when I was there. Nice and cheap, too. But, of course, if we have to pay duty on it, it'll send up the cost for it. Well, I, I don't know, Stan. I, I don't like trying to get things past the customs. I've never done that before. Oh, no, come off it. People do it all the time, and the customs know it. They don't care much. It's the professional smugglers they're always after. But if you feel like that about oh, it... No, you... no, no, it's all right, Stan. You've done me a favour or two. I'd like to repay you in some way. I'll take the package for you. It was a few weeks after that conversation took place that I happened to notice an ad in the entertainment section of the paper that billed a new dance act at a certain nightclub. As it happened, I noticed that ad at a rather awkward time, for I was running my eye over the paper while I was dictating some correspondence to Julie in the outer office. And the picture of this new dance act, featuring a very fetching Hindu doll named Karisha, rather tended to make me lose my train of thought. Accordingly, I am convinced that the man we have been watching is in no way connected with the embezzlement in question. And I feel you are very... Well, Pete? Uh, hmm? Do you want to finish this letter or not? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what did I say? I just read the last sentence. It ends, and I feel you are very... Pete, will you tear your eyes off that newspaper and finish this? I feel you are very... Lovely. I feel you are very lovely. What? Oh, give me that paper. What? Hey! Now, just what is so lovely in this paper? Uh huh. I see. Oh, no, 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 Julia, I was only window shopping. See Carisha, exotic Indian dancer from fabulous Bengal. Asbestos suit supplied to any male customer who cannot stand the heat she creates. Oh, really? Asbestos suits, huh? Ooh, I can believe it. 
She is a honey. Look, are you going to finish this letter or aren't you? You have an appointment at 10.30 and it's almost that now. Uh, an appointment? Well, who with? Uh, Miss Maria Scarpia. Oh, she'll be a dog, that's for sure, with a name like that. Oh, this may be her now. Oh, Mr. Peter Troy, I have an appointment. I rang yesterday afternoon. Oh, Miss Scarpia, is it? Yes, that's right. Well, come in, won't you? Mr. Troy is right here. Uh, have we met before, Miss Scarpia? No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, you're Mr. Troy? Yes, how do you do? What? But it can't be. What? Why, yes, that's it. The ad in the paper. The ad? Oh, you mean for my act. Yes, it is rather good, isn't it? Your Carisha? But you said your name was... My real name is Maria Scarpia. My parents were Italian. Italian? But the Indian bit. Oh, that. That's just for publicity. Good for business to make out you're foreign, you know. Who wants to see a dancer called Maria Scarpia? Oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Well, it's a real pleasure to meet you, Miss Scarpia. Oh, well, please, sit down. Thank you. Now, uh, what's the trouble? Well, I don't know, really. At least I don't know how deep it goes, but... Mr. Troy, I'm scared. I'd like to show you something. Oh? Just a minute. Yes, here we are. I'd like you to tell me if you know what this is and... If it's what I'm afraid it is, I may be in serious trouble. Oh, let me have a look. Hmm. A white powder. Yes, it looks just like sugar or salt or something. Uh, wait till I taste a few specks, huh? <sighs> yes, I was afraid of that. Is... is it... At a guess, Miss Scarpia. Yes, it is. Oh. This package contains a very dangerous and prohibited narcotic drug. You were right... You could be in serious trouble. That's right, Troy Heroin. The lab confirms that. Well, that's what I figured. Where'd you get it? From a girl. Yeah, I always did have doubts about your taste in women. Who is she? Oh, relax, Inspector. The girl's okay. I'll send her in to see you. You'd better, and quick smart, too. No fooling about with this kind of business, Troy. Remember that. Inspector, I assure you... Never I... mind the assurances. You just have that girl here within half an hour or else. Yes, and you needn't try to treat me as though I came down in the last shower, either. Well, maybe you didn't come down in the last shower, Inspector, but you're all wet just the same. What? Look, Why, will, you... will you let me get a word in? Yes, if it's a civil word and not meant to be funny. It'll be absolutely funereal. I am trying to tell you that this girl brought that stuff in from India. Yes, well, that'll make two charges, possession and smuggling. But she didn't know she was smuggling heroin. She thought she was just doing some Englishman in Calcutta a favor by bringing in a bracelet for someone or other. The name of this man in Calcutta? Stanley Lockwood. Stanley Lockwood, and the name of the person the bracelet was supposed to go to. Oh, she doesn't know that. He's to contact her at her flat this afternoon. She didn't know the name of the contact, and yet you're asking me to believe she didn't know there was something fishy going on. Yes, I am asking you to believe that. As a matter of fact, on the trip home, she did start to think about it a bit, and after she'd gotten through customs with the package okay, her curiosity got the better of her, and she opened it. Yeah, and she found the drug and ran straight to you with it. Well, why didn't she go to the police if she suspected it was an illegal drug? She was scared, Inspector. So she found my name in the phone book and thought I might be able to advise her. And she's not one of those people who find the police terribly reasonable. Yeah, that's a likely story. And right now, I am inclined to go along with her. Oh, are you? Yes, because you're behaving like the most intolerant and bullheaded policeman I ever knew. Well, now I'm on. Hmm. Well, now, just for fun, let's suppose that I'm prepared to be very cooperative... What would you like me to do? Uh, just for fun, I would like you to get organized to trap this contact when he calls at the girl's flat this afternoon to pick up the dope. I see. Or trying and shock you. Because that's exactly what we'll do. Here we are. 
Julie, Maria did say she was going right back home, didn't she? Oh, yes, that's right. I told her you'd contact her. Oh, good girl. Well, I want to make sure she knows what she's supposed to do this afternoon when that creep calls for his little package. The police have no idea who he'd be. No. Well, how would they know? He might be some peddler who's already on the files, or he might be somebody new. Anyway, Caswell's organized his men to lurk near at hand. You had no trouble with him? <laughs> well, a little, but not much. Naturally, he takes anything to do with drug running pretty seriously, and that's inclined to make the old boy a little humorless, but, well, we can't blame him for that. Well, shall we go up and see Maria, then? Yeah, let's do that. It's a quaint little block of flats she lives in. Where's the entrance, I wonder? I don't know. Uh, probably just around this corner. It's a nice, quiet area, this. Mm. Wouldn't mind living here myself. I... Pete! Police cars. And an ambulance. What the... Pete, look up there. That window's all smashed. What? Oh, smashed is right. Looks as though it was blown out by a bomb. A bomb? What? Pete, you don't hey, mean... Come on. Just a minute there, please. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you go in there. But, uh, what's the trouble, Constable? Oh, I can't discuss that, sir. Do you live in this building? No, no, I don't, but a client of mine does. Uh, oh, my name's Troy. Peter Troy, private investigator. Uh, here's my card. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I know of you, Mr. Troy. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss Summers. Miss Summers? How do you do? Well, seeing as it's you, Mr. Troy, I suppose it's all right my telling you. There's been an explosion here. We think someone threw a bomb. Oh, that's what I thought. And probably threw that window there. Terrible mess it made. Wrecked everything in the room. Yeah, but uh, anybody hurt? Yes, sir. A woman was killed. A woman? What was her name? Uh, one Maria Scarpia. Oh, no. And quite a young woman. We understand she was a dancer of some sort. Yeah. You know her, Mr. Troy? I knew her. She was the client I was coming to see. Oh. Then uh, Inspector Thomas will want to talk to you, I imagine, sir. He'll be out in a minute. Inspector Caswell knows everything that I could tell Inspector Thomas. And I suggest you let Caswell know what's happened right away. As far as I'm concerned, this case is over. <laughs> Julie and I drove back to the office. And I can tell you I was feeling not a little low right then. It's never much fun to learn that a beautiful doll has been bumped off. But apart from that, my trouble was a twinge of guilty conscience that I'd let it happen to Maria Scarpia. I was supposed to be advising her about what to do when she'd found she'd been the unwitting smuggler of an illegal drug. And I let her go back to her apartment and be bombed to death. Cheer up, Pete. It wasn't your fault. Feel like a cup of coffee? No, no, thanks, honey. Oh, look, you couldn't possibly foresee that somebody would try to kill Maria. I still can't see why she was killed anyway. Well, the contact who was supposed to meet her must have known she came to see me. Oh, well, maybe he shadowed her to satisfy himself she was okay before going to see her. You mean in case she'd found out what was in the package? Yeah. And when he saw her come into this office, he figured she knew too much. And then, of course, he wasn't going to risk picking up the dope. Yes, but why did he kill her? Oh, teach her a lesson, maybe. Or just to get rid of her in case she hadn't already told all she knew. That seems a pretty slight reason. Julie, drug peddlers are the dirtiest crooks in the business. They don't play around. Human life here or there is nothing to people who are busy destroying lives every day with their merchandise. Well, you must stop blaming yourself, Pete. It was just Maria's bad luck that she got mixed up with such people. Well, I don't like letting it go, Julie. I hate to let those jerks get away with this. But what can you do? You don't even have a client anymore. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, there's no money in it, but I'd like to feel I'd done the right thing by that girl. And not for the smart aleck reason you think, either. I wasn't thinking of the reason you think I was thinking of, Pete. Well, <laughs> well you make it sound awfully complicated, honey, but thanks anyway. <laughs> you know, I think I'll go down and see the old inspector. Oh, what for? I don't know. But I'm not going to get anywhere just sitting here. He might give me a hint that'll help. Uh, by mistake, of course. So if you need me, you can get... Oh, you better get that before I go, honey. We'll see if it's important. Well, if I wave you to go, it'll mean it's only routine. Mm-hmm. 
Peter Troy, private investigator, Miss Summer speaking. Oh, hello, Troy. I was just thinking about you. Well, those evil, frustrated thoughts will only sicken your mind, Inspector. You should resist them. I expect this Scarpia case was a bit of a blow to you, hmm? Yeah, I expect it was. Pity her getting killed like that. It would have been a nice, simple arrest, our getting our hands on that contact man. We might have lost a battle, Inspector, but the campaign's not over yet. Oh, very sententious. Just what does all that mean? I've been thinking... I'll make a note of it. I've been thinking about this bomb thing. Now, gunmen, we get pretty often. People get cut up with shivs even more often. But bombs, we do not run across every day. So you think we ought to be able to rush out and arrest the man who threw the bomb just like that? No. That's good. Not the man who threw the bomb, but maybe the man who made it. Assuming, of course, he was a pro. Ah. The way it adds up for me is this. The man who was to pick up the dope was probably a pro, already in the dope racket. Probably working for some big boss. Yeah. So, when the big boss decides that Maria should be got rid of, probably because he knew she'd seen me... He tells the contact man to get rid of her. And the contact man, being a pro, goes to another pro, fix him up with a bomb. And thereby makes a blunder. I agree. I already have two men going through the MO files for bomb experts who are not in jail. Well, you, you mean you're ahead of me, Inspector? Oh, yes, so far way ahead. Does that make you miserable? Oh, utterly. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. The novelty is doing wonderful things for my morale. Oh, it's okay. You enjoy it while you can. Because I have a small piece of information up my little old sleeve that you don't know about. Yes? Well, then I suggest you let me have it. Unless you want to be in trouble for obstructing justice. <laughs> a deal, Inspector? Oh, here we go again. All right, what's your deal? That we work together on this thing. We don't need you. The police The are police quite... have to stick strictly to the rules. Now, I've learned how to bend the rules a little without exactly breaking them. And that could save us a lot of time. What are you talking about? You have your men getting out a list of crooks who make bombs. Now, maybe from that we can even pick the most likely character to have made the bomb that was thrown at Maria. I shouldn't count on it. Well, we can hazard a guess anyway. And if we check with some stoolies, we'll know who's been making bombs lately. All right, then we arrest this fellow? No, no, that's no good. Now, that's what I mean. By the time your guys have carefully questioned and cross-questioned this man, days will have passed. No, oh, let me get to this guy first. And you'll beat him up, I suppose. Well, you know I can't allow that, Troy. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. But, uh, if I weren't there, how would I know that you'd beaten him up, huh? For instance, if you happened to read this bomb maker's name off an open file on my desk and go to him while I was still getting organized... If I did that, Inspector, you'd have to talk to me very severely. Yes, I certainly would. Anyway, my sergeant will be in with the list pretty soon, and the fool will no doubt leave the file open on my desk. <laughs> Inspector, sometimes I think you're almost human. Well, can I help you brush up your bridge game while we're waiting? No, please don't. The last time you did that, I called my wife out of no trumps and got the lecture of my life. I suggest it'll be a good idea if you give me this piece of information you're hoarding. Okay. You've earned it. Uh, Inspector, you'd better sit down first. This will really rock you. Nice little workshop you have here, Bugs. Very nice. What do you want with me, Troy? Want your radio fixed or something? What, and have you take out all the good valves and replace them with dud ones? No, thank you, Bugs. Hey, you know, I wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm an honest repairman, I am. I build up a very good little business here. How's the bomb business these days, Bugs? Bomb business? <laughs> what are you talking about? Bombs. The ones you make. I don't make no bombs. The only bomb I've got's my old car. She's a bomb, all right. Sell her for 50 nicker, I would. Oh, Bugs, you're not being too frank with me. And that makes me very sorrowful. And very restless. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Troy, but it's not my problem now, is it? Oh, but it is, Bugs. You see, when I get restless, I'm inclined to, to sort of wave my arms about like this. Now, yeah, 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 watch out what you're doing. You know how much them vels cost? Look, you broke it, four of them. And you know something, Bugs? Unless you tell me who paid you for the bomb that killed the Scarpia girl, I'm going to break every valve in your workshop. Hey? Oh, no, Troy, please. 
Look, don't get rough. Bugs every stoolie within miles knows you made that bomb. The police know it and I know it. Now, you are going to tell me who it was and you're going to tell me quickly or you're going to have a very fouled up workshop. You've got just ten seconds to make up your mind. <laughs> bigger than we thought, Troy. You know Willie Blunt works for Hartley, don't you? Yeah, I know. As soon as Bugs Bright told me it was Willie who paid him for the bomb, I guessed we had ourselves a big fish to fry. Yes, well, the trick now is to um, get Willie to talk. Oh, we know he was the contact man who was to pick up the dope from the Scarpia girl. He's going to be tough to crack. He'll talk when we hit him with our secret weapon. Yes, I think maybe you're right. Oh, this will be him now. Come in. Oh, come in, will you? Thank you, Sergeant. That'll be all. What the blazes is all this, Inspector? What do you mean by... Sit down, will you? <laughs> you know, I, I never could get used to calling you Willie. I always feel it should be William to match that accent of yours. We'll forget the little pleasantries, if you don't mind. I don't have to remind you, Inspector, that if you're not prepared to charge me with something, I'm not staying here for long. But we are prepared to charge you. With the murder of a young woman by bombing at flat number three Elton Court. Have you gone mad, Inspector? You know you have nothing on me, nothing at all. That Scarpia girl... How did you know who we were talking about? <laughs> Why, don't be ridiculous. Don't you think I read the papers? You knew Maria Scarpia, though, didn't you? You were going to pick up some dope from her yesterday afternoon. Oh, talk sense. I do not know the Scarpia girl. I've never set eyes on her. Wouldn't know if I fell over her. Excuse me a moment, Drew. What's that for? Just a signal for Miss Summers to come in. Miss Summers? Who's she? Ah, uh, Miss Summers. Bring your friend in now, will you, please? What is this, Inspector? No. No, it isn't possible. Ah, I see you do know Miss Scarpia after all, Willie. Is this the man you saw throw the bomb in your flat, Miss Scarpia? That's the man, Inspector. That's the man who threw the bomb and killed my roommate, Betty Parks. Roommate? I, I didn't know she had a roommate. I... <gasps> OK, Willie, go ahead and finish it. You were to pick up that dope for Hartley, weren't you? And Hartley told you to get rid of Maria, didn't he? <sighs> all right. All right, I'll talk. I'm not taking the rap for Hartley. It was his idea. I, I didn't know the girl saw me throw the bomb, but... She it... didn't. She was nowhere near the place at the time. That was just our little game, Willie. What? Why, you... Maria didn't get back to her building until sometime after the bombing. She got scared and ran. Then she phoned me to ask what to do. But I'm glad we were able to bring you two together at last. I want to see my lawyer. Oh, come off it, Willie. You know you're a goner now. The only way you can help yourself is to tell us all about Hartley's operation in the drug racket. Come along now, I'm... We'll go into the other office and have a nice chat. All right. All right, I'll talk. But you've got to help me with that murder rap, Inspector. I can't promise anything, Willie. Just talk and hope for the best, eh? Come on. Well, something like a happy ending. Certainly for you anyway, Maria. Yes, but oh, I hate to think about Betty. She didn't have anything to do with this. And now, yes, hold she... it, Maria, hold it. You mustn't think about that. It wasn't your fault. And you can't help Betty by thinking about it. Uh, say, uh, how would you like a nice steak dinner this evening? Well, We'd uh, both love it, wouldn't we, Maria? <laughs> Julie, I was speaking to... To both of us, of course. And I suggest you leave it that way. You see, Maria and I have had a good talk about you. Oh. Yes. And you'd better walk softly, Peter Troy. Peter Troy. 